What's up Marwin fans, welcome back to another review of the Breaker Do Waves this week's chapter 197. Only thing I can say to summarise this chapter in a nutshell was the feels man, it was so emotional today, definitely hit me hard and I feel like it was really heartbreaking and um, depressing to read at times, particularly the beginning of this chapter with Jung Chan's inevitable end and his last few moments in this series. I did say before, you know, I don't like this character, I wanted him to get his ass handed to him, but I never said I wanted him to die, so seeing him die was beyond, you know, what I was expecting, and what is, um, what is funny is I always believed him to be an arrogant, smug, you know, asshole, and I believed he had a superiority complex when this chapter kind of showed the opposite is true, he had somewhat of an inferiority complex. Now this was explained before but it was more elaborated in this chapter when he has his last kind of um, I'd say precious moments or thoughts of um, So Jung, um, So Chung Hook and obviously when he actually meets him and we can see you know he's dropped to his knees he's thinking what have I been doing so far up to this point in my life and you can tell he's realised I've just wasted my life when all I really wanted was for So Chung to look up to me and respect me as an elder. This is what he wanted, this is the only thing he wanted and this was shown with his last precious memories of meeting So Chung for the first time. He just wanted his little, you might as well say Kohai as they say in Japanese, to look up to him as you know like a senpai. And ironically when So Chung arrives by car he calls out to him saying Sa um, Sai Yung and in Korean that means you know obviously superior um, teacher whatever elder it's a respectful way of to refer to someone who's older than you and this shocks Jung, um, Jung Chan because he's thinking am I dreaming this can't be true he's like even if this is a dream I'm happy that you refer to me that way and this is the way you see me and he passes away with a smile on these lips while So Chung is desperately calling out to him and obviously in complete shock that he's died thinking what is he doing here what happened you know call an ambulance he's in complete disarray and it is kind of sad because I don't think Jung Chan really got to redeem himself in terms of you know he didn't really get to make up for the you know bad actions he's made in this series but he did kind of redeem his character we saw into his thoughts on he was just basically a puppet of Jay Gao who was a puppet of Kaiser so you know it's like he's at the bottom of the hierarchy of being used and it was sad because he didn't even get the chance to tell So Chung anything because that was what he was intending to do so he could have revealed you know the truth behind Chung Morang the fact that Kaiser is like you know the puppet king the um, basically the Chung Du Mong is being used and everything so all of this could have you know been divulged to So Chung but now he's gone and he's it's, you know it's basically left on his dead lips he couldn't say anything but we did get a bit of funny moments in this chapter particularly where with Jong Lei Wan when he finally wakes up to see his partner Lee Kim soon and it's funny because they have this kind of superior subordinate kind of relationship but she's always mocking him and this is very apparent in this chapter when she's like oh see I told you he's alright the captain has a shitty personality but is as tenacious as the croc coach and he doesn't clock on at first because he's shaking his head he's like oh I feel like you're um you know praising me but it sounds like you're mocking me and then he clocks he's like grabbing her he's like oh you're mocking me and I'm laughing because we haven't seen that kind of humor in a while and it reminds me and gives me a bit of nostalgia of the first break or where they draw them all chibi fired and there's those you know kind of um petty squabbling and things like that so that was fun to see but after that, the only thing we see is, you know, Jong Lei Wan looking out at the aftermath of, you know, Shi Wen Chung Wu's fight at the Seal Tower, wondering what happened, where Chung Wu's gone, and that's more or less it. So I'm not sure he's going to show up again, most likely until part three. I feel like he's going to be some sort of help to Shi Wen in the future. But remember, he still is responsible for Shi Ho's death so that's still up in the air and if Chung Wu finds out whoa he better be out of the way of that one but speaking of Chung Wu himself Jesus he was depressing in this chapter you can tell that he's finally regained all of his memories everything's back and he's not going to run from anymore he's going to keep them in his heart because this is something precious to him Shi Ho and Shi Wun are basically his family and the last panel says that this is the kind of memories he wants to remember from now because everything after this is most likely going to gradually turn to crap 
and he's keeping it in his heart so it is it's really depressing I, I just can't you know imagine what's going to happen in part three you even see in this chapter that Chung Wu easily um, can answer a question when he was uh, um, you know questioned about the debt and they had been handed over he tells Julia no there was bombs in the sealed tower what you would you have done we were all going to die but when he was questioned on she win now he remained quiet and kept that kind of force to himself now the whole situation with the um bombs in the sealed tower makes me think that Chang is actually more threatening to Kai's and the leaders than we like, actually believe because the fact is Chang didn't know about these bombs he didn't believe it at first there were bombs there but when he finally realized that there could have been bombs he's probably thinking oh so they tried to get rid of me and this is even further more confirmed by the one of the glasses guy, um, the Black Forest Defense member in the helicopter. He was like, Chang Wu has risen in power so quickly. The elders are probably starting to get worried. So there is some truth to this. They wanted to cut off a loose end. They couldn't have, you know, this monster keep growing and growing in power and become a threat to them. And even though I believe Kaiser at the moment is still uh, some next level where he can't be touched, I feel like he probably did eventually realized Chang Wu is going to be a fort in his plans a fawn in his side and he wanted to eliminate that threat and don't forget Kaiser was the one that ordered Shi Ho's death so if Chang Wu was ever to find that out he would most likely rebel in an instant and go freaking black origin thresholds in an instant on him so I feel like he wanted to keep his puppet sweet and quiet but also when the time comes eliminate and clean up his loose ends as soon as he feels fit to so that as I said I feel like Chong Wu has definitely shown in this battle he's more dangerous to them than he is a toy and Kaiser is probably you know only keeping him around until he wants to get rid of him so um, as I said that's going to be interesting to see what's going to play out in part 3 with Kaiser and Chong Wu's um, obviously you know working relationship and will um, Chong Wu eventually realise what is Kaiser hiding from him because I don't think it's just she owes death I feel like there's probably something more deeper than that that he doesn't want she um chung to know about but as i said last thoughts i'd say about she and the fact that um chung is thinking about him and that comment about you all you have to do is crawl up from the very bottom and reach the top it will take time but he will wait you know and appreciate the moments he had with she ho and um and she makes me think that he really does still care for Shi and, and he's looking forward to see him grow up but he realizes when they meet again it's not going to be as disciple and master it's going to be as enemies and he seems kind of resentful i'd say remorse he wants to repent for what he's done to Shi ho and what he's done for Shi Wu, and he most likely is expecting to die maybe i don't know that's what it seemed like to me he just seems so gullum gull and sad like he just wants like he's happy he's, his disciples getting stronger but upset that he's gonna be fighting him in probably the um end of part three or something like that so that was very sad to see and i, I just hope she ho can wake up in time and you know kind of slap him out of it and maybe that would even somewhat repair you know the relationship between she Wun and chung Wu. but that's probably wishful thinking but i feel like she ho is definitely needed Chung Wu has got so much guilt on his mind and so much depression. He needs someone like her to return to the scene and kind of reawaken his personality that we saw in part one. Because the guy is so sad, he's literally on the breaking point. And as I said, Shi Wun, after witnessing Elder Kwan's death, is not happy and lost his faith in Chung Wu. There's just so much friction and drama. It's really going to be some crazy stuff happening in part three, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. And also, we still need to see what's happened 30 years ago. So, part three is looking to be great. The setup for the end of New Ways into part three is definitely being well done. And I don't think there's much left of um, New Ways. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to that. I can't wait to see what happened next. So, you guys know the usual. You heard what I've had to say. I've enjoyed it. But let me know what you guys think. And I'll speak to you guys next time. Take care.